What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to a live Friday episode of Lockdown Badgers. We got the quad pod on. We're going to talk State of the Union. Where does Wisconsin fall in the Big Ten hierarchy? Scary's on. We got Justin Rajiv. A whole bunch on today's show, plus your comments. All that and more on Wisconsin. Let's go and let's get this thing started. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every day. And we're just going to get right into this one. We got the quad pod on. So we are bringing on not one, not two, but three other incredible Badger uh, content creators. Gary Alvarez, Rajiv, Justin. What's up, guys? Welcome to the show and let's do this. Happy Friday, people. Welcome, Scary. Happy to have you on, man. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm, I know you are. Um, and I, as I noted, I noted before in the green room, uh, for the first time in my life, my my head is small. <laughs> this is this is amazing. So just just pretend that it's 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 of uh, normal life size. Let's and by it. the way, Ryan, wh- yeah. where did you where did you was it Bed Bath and Madison? Where where did you find a whiteboard that says subscribe to the Scary Alvarez podcast? I've been looking for that everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to find. And listen, that's a great segue. That's a that's a pro thing right there. I want to kick it over to you to start with. Talk about what you got going on, uh, your podcast, your new show. How can we get those subscriber numbers up? If you're listening to this show live, YouTube, audio, wherever it is, go subscribe to Scary Alvarez podcast. Let's get his numbers up. What are you doing with that platform? I appreciate that. And uh, hey, just so you know, I'm not sure how many people you have on, but but Cindy, Cindy's, uh, Cindy's watching tonight. So I, she promised me that she would... Uh, uh, peep in on this. Well, what she's doing the meat, uh, the Alvarez meatloaf for Friday, the Friday night meatloaf. Thanks for saying that. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. So, and we can talk obviously at, at any length about my, my podcast, but it, it dropped last week. We had the, the Rucci family on fantastic first guests, a great, great family, a couple of great kids playing for the Badgers. And, uh, if you haven't watched it, check it out. Cause that's a pretty good sign uh, for how it's going to be going forward. I will say, though, it's going to be a real uh, kind of potpourri of different kinds of guests. Uh, the next guest is going to be Matt LaPay, Voice of the Badgers. So it's going to kind of jump around. Oh, look what I did. Um, from, from, you know, one area to the other, we're going to, we're going to get into hockey and basketball and, and, and wrestling. And it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. So, and, and obviously, since I'm here, I'm going to have to have all three on, on mine as well. Would absolutely love Sounds it. Sounds good. Appreciate uh, it. Let's let's jump into this. So the first topic we wanted to get to was football state of the union and how we're going to get into this scare. We were talking about this a little before the show is we were, we were originally going to say, do you feel better about the program now than maybe a year, half a year ago? And I think everyone kind of agrees we do. Where do you see Wisconsin in the hierarchy of the Big Ten is where we want to go. Is Wisconsin jumping in potentially into that Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, USC realm? Or do you not think we're quite there yet? Um, and that's how we're going to kick this one off. And it's for anybody to jump in. Rajiv, why don't we start with you? <laughs> I'll take I'm sorry. I thought you were addressing someone else. I will definitely take that. I will start I off. The, with I appreciate a, your reverent silence. That was very nice of you to make sure I didn't I didn't talk first. <laughs> I mean, you guys, I love, I love these guys. Just trying to be respectful of you, Scary, you know? Understandable. <clears throat> you are Understandable. the Don. I mean, absolutely. Barry <laughs> is the Don. So, listen, I mean, I, I'm going to lead off with total optimism because that's what I am. Um, yeah, I'm feeling amazing about this because we are in that upper echelon. We are on our way there. We're not, we're not in Michigan, Ohio state yet. And we're not, we're not, we haven't even gotten on the field with Fickle yet, but we are in the middle of a football cultural revolution, right? That's what's happening right now. We are taking what Barry Alvarez started, what he created. Thank, there you go. What he created and building it up to what was taken on by the others and Bielema and everybody. And now taking it to the next level, a level we've never been at before. I think we're going to see recruiting intensify. We're going to see our wins intensify. We're going to see our style of offense change. Everything about our team is different, which is really the only way that a team can elevate themselves into that upper echelon. If you're going to be Michigan and Ohio State, you need to evolve because they are constantly evolving. They are bringing in people that no one else can get. So we have to take that next step. We are we are we are not at Michigan and Ohio State level yet. Frankly, I think we're we're better than Penn State. We've been better than Penn State many years in the past. This I understand that they their their recruiting is solid, but I think we've got the better coach, um, and <laughs> we're going to surpass them in my opinion in this year, the next, and then we're going to be right on the heels of Michigan and Ohio State from a national perspective. You've heard me say this before. I think we are the next Clemson. We're going to be able to get up to that next level, which means yes. 
national championships in the next 10 years. Um, but we're there. We just have to do it on the field. I know that's the biggest part, right? That's the biggest piece that's still left, but everything has been done right. We're in the middle of a culture change. And yeah, we are just under Michigan Ohio State in the conference. You know, going into this year, I would have said pri the prior year we were behind Penn State because we'd proven it before. I think going into this year, we we will finish ahead of them in the rankings. That's that's my bold declaration for this year. We're going to end up having a better record than Penn State this season. Um, I think going forward in the hierarchy of the conference, I think we probably slot in behind Ohio State, Michigan, and USC. And I think we can hold that spot. And I think we can challenge from there. Um, we do have some work to do from an overall roster composition to get it up to the point that I think we can take those teams down. But I think we're definitely headed in the right direction. I, I like our schemes, and that's a big part of why I think we're better than Penn State because I just don't think Penn State can get the quarterback play at that school despite the talent advantages they have to really be a player. They're a lot like Michigan before Michigan kind of turned the corner here where they just don't seem to get quality enough quarterback play to really be a threat for anything. So at this point, yeah, I think that that's where we're going to be. I think we we are building a stockpile of good quarterbacks to the point where the only schools that are probably recruiting the position better than us in conference are probably Michigan and Ohio State and USC. I'm going to I'm going to echo what what y'all said here about Penn State. Um, they are given a lot of credit because they're quote unquote a blue blood from a football team. Uh, you know, they have past history, but you know, this, what, what got me thinking on this today was there was one of the threads on Twitter and someone said, fickle is getting punked by, by, by Franklin in recruiting this year. So I, of course my, the little, uh, unpaid interns in my mind start cranking. I said, well, let, let me take a quick look at that. So of course I went over to rivals, which is, as you know, that's the, that's the best badger one for now. And I, I looked at the, the recruiting rankings and for 24's class, Penn state is eight or 12. They have 23 recruits. We have 20. They have 12 fours. We have eight fours. And the per recruit ranking average is 3.52 to 3.4. That's basically, I mean, it's almost identical. I mean, we're, I mean, they're still ahead of us, and I understand that. But so you're telling me that a 10 year coach, James Franklin, who's been there for 10 years, has had every advantage to lay down those roots in every recruiting place he possibly can with this blue blood caliber program. He's barely ahead of Luke Fickle's first first real class, you know, heading into August. Mm -hmm. The person clearly hadn't looked at – I don't know if it was maybe P.J. Fleck with a burner or something. It, he sounded a little, little goofy. But, um, look, I don't accept the premise that Penn State is a better program than, than Wisconsin is right now. I don't accept it. They have more tradition and those sorts of things. I understand they, they got a, a recruit today that we were looking at. Everyone knew he was going there. This was not a shock. Mm -hmm. I, I know it's it's presented as a breaking news thing, but yeah, I, I am completely convinced. And of course, you got to prove it on the field, and I, you always got to prove it on the field. And I understand that, but I I, I think it, I'm not sure one of y'all said this. This year, we will finish ahead of Penn State. I believe that, and I believe that this is a a uh, inevitable thing. There'll be years where someone's a little better or worse, but the course of the trajectory of the program, like Roger said, Wisconsin will find itself if not in the same conversation as Penn State, ahead of them. USC, I don't know. I want to see USC and UCLA <laughs> play a play a game in November in, in Iowa City or Madison before I start saying they're going to be doing anything in the Big Ten. So I, they, 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 to me, they're they're below Wisconsin. But anyway, that's that's kind of where I am. So I think we kind of have – Ryan, what do you, what's, what's your thought of this? I mean, we're, we're wondering. Yeah, uh, Daltrey said the word Penn State is the first rung on the Big Ten ladder. We got to climb to get to the top. I think that's a a, a good point there. I, I see. I, I'm a little different than I think the majority here in that I do think Penn State is a better program than Wisconsin at this point. I, I'm higher on Franklin. I think they have a better recruiting base that they can pull from, um, and I think the history of Penn State. It, it, when you have a lot of history, it builds up. Um, infrastructure resources <laughs> money facilities and all that plays in to be able to land continue to land more talent now I, i'm not i think luke fickle can get to that point but i do think penn state is a rung above wisconsin um at this point in the big 10 uh, and i think frank was a pretty good coach i think he recruits well and he hires good assistants and that's 80 percent of the battle in coaching right getting talent and hiring good assistants now if we're talking in two or three years like what fickle did this year and scary you made a good point on this to get to where he is in his first full class, this is only going to get better. 
Like, I mean, this is this is only going to get better. So I think he can break into the bottom tier of that upper group of Big Ten programs. But I, I don't see us ever overtaking like an Ohio State or a USC. No. I don't think it's going to happen on a, on a by-year basis. And like I said, the biggest difference between what I think we can be going forward and what Penn State is – is I just don't see the quarterback development. They consistently get four-star quarterbacks in there, and none of them really turn into a guy. And, yes, they have a kid coming in who's highly touted this next year. However, until I actually see him do something in that Penn State offense, I have a hard time saying that this guy's going to be a stud. Now, Ohio State, everybody they plug into that offense becomes awesome. There's a reason Sean Clifford started for the last five years for Penn State, and he was a very mediocre quarterback for them. That proves either their scheme is a problem or they're struggling with their talent evaluation at the quarterback position because they're not getting guys in there that can be highly productive in that offense. My gut leans on it. It's an offensive issue that it's just not very quarterback friendly because other than Trace McSorley's one big year, they really haven't been anything impressive at the quarterback position. Now, Michigan really hasn't either until the last couple of years. So. Yeah, Michigan. Let's let's. You make a good point. I mean, we were talking fairly recently about was Jim Harbaugh going to be run out of Ann Arbor, which would have been pretty hilarious to see, frankly. But I don't think it's Jimmy. I mean, he's fine. I mean, he's proven they could be a very good NFL coach. And but but really, he had a number of years there. Obviously, that that he was not not super impressive. I mean, he had some decent recruiting seasons. But Wisconsin that that was a that was a a, a coin flip for many years with Harbaugh, who'd win that game. Uh, he has obviously elevated his program, uh, and I do think that's going to be an issue going forward. I know we've had some issues with you know, him uh, him getting some recruits from us and, and all that stuff, but I don't know. I mean, this this Michigan is going to be now ahead of Ohio State and, and the top of the Big Ten ladder. I don't buy that at all. I, I think I, I think Ohio State is still right right with them. Wisconsin's coming. Harbaugh can hear the boots. And by the way, can can you get speaking of hearing? Can you hear me? Yep. You're okay, I just I switched I switched from a BlackBerry to a Gen One Android uh, uh, this week, and I wasn't sure if it was. Yeah, I was. I, I'm not trying to brag. I wasn't sure if it's it's going to work. It's I, I found it. It was in a lost and found uh, in, in the football offices. Yeah, I think I think. Uh, Gabriel Anderson, well, I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure who does that. City takes care of that for me. I, I, but it says G Anderson on it. I don't know what who that is, but. Anyway, lock is bound right next to the barge and the hippo formations, just kind of discarded <laughs> off to the side. Uh, yeah, it's it's in the Tanner Tanner McAvoy room. <laughs> if you look at if you look underneath the plaque, it says Tanner Vac, Tanner McAvoy room. That's a call. Let me ask you is this: um, continuing with football here, uh, we've talked a lot about the the talent that that Luke's Luke's <clears> brought <throat> in. This is a relatively easy schedule this year. Is it possible that? Let's say worst case, the, the hype doesn't quite meet the the expectations this year for whatever reason, and that could be an eight win season, a seven win season. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Tanner Mordecai struggles a little bit. Maybe there's some growing pains with the offense and defense. Um, are we seeing? Is is it possible that the recruiting wouldn't continue to build? Like, does he need? I guess I'm saying, do we need to have success on the field this year to continue to build this up? I don't necessarily think it has to be <clears throat> this year because it's it's all it's it's not just about wins and losses right away. I mean, he's obviously changing things here. Look, our offense is different. Everything about it is different. And I think the way he recruits, the pipelines he's building, all those things are changing. And it's and and also the, the size of our recruiting staff. We we've talked about that before. I mean, just everything is going to be different. So, and look, anytime you change culture, when you have this much adjustment within a program, you have risk. It's not necessarily going to work automatically, although we want to believe that. And I certainly do believe that it, you're, you're right. It might not happen. That doesn't concern me. If we come out here and we have an eight win season and, and we're underperforming a little bit and we lose some of the games, we're not maybe supposed to lose. And Ohio State does their typical annual thumping of us. It's still going to be OK because everything else with this program is on the up. You're going to have years, you're going to have games where it's not going to quite fit. That doesn't mean that anyone needs to panic because everything's still changing in the right direction. So no, it doesn't bother me one bit. It's okay that he struggles a little bit if that happens because all those pipelines, those new areas that we're looking at, the new states we're looking at, his new recruiting philosophy, the types of players we're going after, everything changes. <clears throat> and I have no reason to believe that what he built in Cincinnati cannot happen here. So... I'm going to paint this a little bit differently. And I think the way I look at this is simply for the next cycle. I think we can, if, if we have a 
below what we're expecting season. I think we can repeat what we've done this year, but I think it is 100% important that if we want to have a step up in terms of what we're doing, that we have a good season. And what that means is if we want to get to say maybe 10, 12, four stars in the next class, you need to put a show on and, and make it look to these kids like, well, Wisconsin's taking a step. You know, they, the offense is exciting. The defense looks good. This is a team that can can be a dark horse, you know, heading into whether it's the Big Ten or the, the you know, playoffs going forward. I think people see that step even if – even if, when the, with, with the long go and everything that's changing, that step is seen regardless if we have eight or nine or ten wins. I think I agree with that to an extent. The, the What I'll say is the caveat on that is – Yes, I think there are people that view it that way, but to recruits who are being recruited by the teams that are already doing it versus us who has not has to kind of prove it, we need to prove it on the field. We need to go – if we want to compete against Penn State and Michigan for some of these kids that we, we got stung by this cycle, where you do that is finishing ahead of them record-wise for the season. We go out and we have an 11-win season this year, and Penn State goes 8-4. and four. Michigan maybe goes 10-2. and two. Now you can point to it and be like, hey, we went to the title game for the conference. You know, maybe we were a dark horse going to the for a playoff slot. You get a chance to prove yourself going forward. It looks really enticing to those kids where you're like, hey, not only can you come here, we may be able to get you some earlier playing time than some of those other spots. Penn State fan jumps in here, says, uh, when is Wisconsin one in Keel? Uh, Congrats, you've done it one time in the 25 years you've been in conference. When has Wisconsin won the Big Ten? I don't know, Steve. There's something <laughs> called the Information Superhighway. You can just get pull up your your AOL and click on a few a few things, and you can see how many times Wisconsin's won the Big Ten. I personally, uh, uh, well, actually, let me make it collectively. The four hosts of this show right now won back to back Rose Bowl titles collectively uh, one time not not so long ago, and then. Uh, after the coach of that team moved on to, to greener pastures, there were three straight Rose Bowls in the early uh, 2010s when I believe Penn State was in the conference watching the Rose Bowl on television like a lot of other uh, teams were. Uh, Stephen Keel, if that is your real name, James Franklin. This, this is why we have scared. James, just use your ahead. real name, James. It's okay, man. You got, you got a little bit brassed off by a couple of us yeah. saying that Penn State, they've been there 10 years and you've, you've won one important game in 10 years. <laughs> I mean, you know, congratulations on the on that. But I mean, uh, Besides all those times that Wisconsin has won it, though, Stephen yeah. is asking when has Wisconsin done it. Yeah, um, exactly. That's very true. Is, is he going to bring up the, the 2017 win that Penn State <laughs> had over Head over Jonathan Taylor. Oh, look, look. He's he's really there. Yeah. Down. See, that yeah. conversation doesn't matter anymore. Right. Now. Yeah. How many natty? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. We're, changing, we're changing the yeah. argument now. Yeah. He's making a how many natty. I don't know, right. man. We can put I, you I, I in mean, the, the Nebraska green room, and you can talk they're, to them. They're like, <laughs> they're like people hitting middle age now that haven't seen a Penn State national title. I don't know about, like, how relevant is that. It's fine. You could be like Minnesota talking about you know Harry S. Truman national titles and, and ones he went over St. Norbert. <laughs> In 1905 with a six-man group, it's fine. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. Now run along, James. You got some work to do because we're gonna we're gonna step on your on your uh, on your hand as we're climbing that ladder. I love it. There, there's a question here, Zach Bartz. Um, I'm curious where you're all where you all are at on this. USC, I feel, falls off a cliff in the Big Ten, losing Caleb Williams among others. No defense. I feel they pretty much uh, fall off more than expected. Big Ten is a different animal than the Pac-12. I would disagree with this. This is just me personally. I think there's just too much talent that USC is going to have access to with more financial resources in the Big Ten. I think they're going to be a monster. But curious where everyone's at on USC and Zach Parts comment here. Lincoln totally. Riley can recruit quarterbacks. He's going to have somebody that can throw the football on that on that team. Now, can they stop anybody is a good question, though. Yeah, from a financial perspective, the Big Ten is on a totally different level than the Pac-12. And let's face it, USC in the Big Ten, as far as the Big Ten goes, they're going to own the West Coast when recruiting. So, I mean, yeah, they're going to be fine. They're going to probably take a step up, if anything else. USC is one of these teams that kind of goes up and down a little bit. They've they've had a lot of success, and they'll have a little bit of a down downtime. I think that downturns are going to shorten up a bit. This is a team that's going to compete. I mean, I the top of the conference – is going to be really, really good when you're talking about a top four 
of Michigan, Penn State, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio State, Wisconsin, and USC. And Penn State's down with the rest of them. But I mean, that's really where the conference is going. I don't think USC falls off one bit. I agree with you, Ryan. The money engine that this conference creates and that what the conference has done for all of its members, they're going to take off and be on a new level. And, th and that may be true. I and this is a trope, but I'm going to. Hey, by the way, is that is that Matoyer, Texas Badger? Uh, of the comment there? I don't know. I mean, oh, so okay. Loki, I think we are having uh, his his dad on the show coming up, which is going to be a lot of fun. So that's just a bit of a joke. Oh, absolutely. I don't know if that is his dad or not, or if that's him or not on that on the chat, though. Well, good to see if, if it is. Hey, by the way, just, just jumping back real quick to USC, and I understand what, what all y'all are saying. It makes a lot of sense. And I'm, I'm just being that Western Pennsylvania guy, cold weather, three yards in a cloud of dust, all that stuff. I'm telling you, SC, when they get into those cold, windy, difficult November, uh, late October, November games in the Big Ten, it just ain't going to be the same thing. It doesn't mean they can't be successful, but it's going to be very different. And there's a recent, I mean, obviously, you know, interconference games are played usually in, in September, so we haven't gotten a lot of, but there's a reason bowl games aren't in, aren't in Madison. Or I was, it's just, and and I see I'm saying the thing about these SEC teams coming up to play, uh, get some of these playoff games in the future. You're, it's going to be very, it's going to be an equalizing factor. So I am very excited to get that, get USC and and, uh, and UCLA and whoever else follows them, Oregon and, and you know Cal, however that ends up, up in Madison in in, in November. And it's going to be those those marshmallows are frozen. You got the quarters in them. It's just it's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, the real ones no. The real ones no. I remember Joey Galloway once uh, was was talking smack about about stuff, and, and then he later ten or ten or twenty years later was talking about getting hit with a, a marshmallow and how that was scary. I just think just man, he had, he had a helmet on and like you know pads, and I just feel like that it, he didn't sound that tough. It's fine. I can still beat him in a race too. Galloway's not that fast. Let me ask you this though: Does Wisconsin transitioning, so that's a great point, by the way, Scary. I, I think those teams coming into a, a cold weather environment is different. It is different. Is it going to be different for Wisconsin now that we are trying to lean more on an air raid? Are we going to lose some of the physicality potentially? Everyone's saying, shaking their head, no. I, I, I think I, there I, was I think an that, element of Wisconsin that played up in cold weather because of the way we played. I think the, the reason why I look at it is because he still wants to run the football. Is, and that's that's where I think it become it matters less is if yeah if he was gonna go if we were talking that he was going to be running the Pirates air raid offense yeah <laughs> Wisconsin would be in trouble because you're just not gonna get the guys the reps in the run game to be effective when you need to just lean on the running game and dominate now I do think that there there are going to be some games where the passing game doesn't look great just because that's the way it is. And we've even seen that with you with uh, Ohio state in conference in some of those games when the, the weather really turns, but that doesn't happen that often. Like people really paint this picture. The passing game does not disappear. It doesn't disappear in the NFL. You, you can still throw the football unless the weather is just bad. And then it's bad for both teams. It's not like us not being able to throw isn't also going to affect the other team. And I, I would actually disagree with you a little bit on this scary. Cause I don't think that, <clears throat> I mean, the season doesn't really turn until November anyway. It's not really cold. And frankly, I, I think the cold thing's a little bit overrated. It's for bowl games. Yeah, I agree with you. The playoff games, when that when that time comes and, and big and home playoff games are happening, that I think is different because then you're really talking about winter. I mean, I feel like I went to so many games in college and, and it was fine. I was in shorts most of the season. And I don't really think it that affects that people that much. And frankly, and I think in just today's game, and the way that the, 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 the game is played and with the athletes and the talent level, I just don't think it affects them until, like Justin said, you have this crazy bad wind day or crazy bad snow day. Sure, that can be the, that can be an equalizer, but I don't really think weather plays much into it, much a factor, especially into the college game, because the season's over by Thanksgiving. Well, just to make sure, I want to I want to have uh, SC in November. <laughs> just just to, I'll, I'll take let's, that. let's take it. Let's test that philosophy. Um, One hundred percent more with that. <laughs> but I can tell you this, Wisconsin knows how to play in Southern California, so we're going to be just fine. So I'm not <laughs> – unless it's one of those 117-degree days with nine fans at at, uh, at the Rose Bowl at UCLA had last year a couple years ago. That was that doesn't look much fun. But Yeah. I, I would say on the, the USC front, I think they're the team that at the top of the ladder has the lowest floor and the highest ceiling. Like they, nothing would shock you with them if they have some some – 
lumps that they gained from coming into the conference and learning how to deal with the different style of football and and just how teams play because it's very different than the Pac-12. Yeah, I think there's definitely going to be a learning curve there. I just think they'll they'll have the talent to to usually mm-hmm. overcome that. Yeah. Uh, Kathleen Burroughs says, I see no reason Wisconsin won't put on a show this year. Fickle knows what he is doing. He also knows how to cover weak spots until he gets exactly the pieces he wants, and he knows what he wants. That's a great comment, Kathleen. I, I agree with that. Um, there's a question or a comment up here, guys. I want to kick this back around to the table while we get the round table here. Not a whale says, uh, blowing the 28 to 7 halftime lead conference champ. We were talking Penn State, uh, 2016 hurts. We should have won that game. What was the most painful of our recent Big Ten title losses to you guys? <laughs> Probably that one. Because mm. we had the, that one. That one or the Ohio State game when we were up 21-7. That one really stung because it, it didn't – although we didn't necessarily think we were going to win that game, that one we were – it was right there and we had that and that that one stings. That's that's the most that bothersome to me. I can't – I think 20, that was – is that 2017 or 2018? I can't remember. What year 2017 was the was the the one where it was 27-21. Uh, 20, we're, we're, we're driving a little bit as time is, is going down. And, and trying to interference hit. call that never happened. Unbelievable. Now, yes, you know, we stalled out about the 45-yard line, but being within one possession of, of being in the college football playoff – with a really good team. I mean, the schedule set up favorably for us that season, but that was a that was a really really talented and and well coached Wisconsin team that season. Uh, it just felt incredibly deflating. Um, and you know, we showed out in Miami a few weeks later, beat the Canes, which is what we do as Badgers. I think they'd want to stop playing us eventually, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know that that was a that was a tough one. That was a really tough one. But frankly, if you know me, every loss hurts. I mean, losing to BYU at home in 2018 that hurt. I mean, it's just it wasn't the stakes were not high, but it was just I, I literally six gallons of sherry, and that was halftime. Six <laughs> yeah. gallons. You guys have six gallons of sherry laying around? I, I've never seen six gallons of sherry. <laughs> Let alone have it laying around. Like again, you're slumming it coming here. You got to remember, this is this is not your typical social circle here. Scary. <laughs> I, I literally took a helicopter ride just to get to the other part of my house to do this podcast. Well, we, I mean, that's that's where we are. And and Sherry's a lot better going in than coming out. Like that. <laughs> I want to shift gears just a little bit, and uh, I definitely want to get into a bunch of comments that we have, but I also want to talk basketball a little bit while we got everybody here. Um, Love it. I want to start with this question: uh, Is Gray Guard and Luke Fickle? held to the same standards is in other words are the expectations different and if so why Um, i'll start with this one i don't think they will be um i think that's the precedent that chris mcintosh is setting so i feel like at this point um the culture of the entire athletic department is shifting and now i i figure they're going to both be held to the same standards recruiting standards winning standards i think that a tone has been set by McIntosh by doing what we didn't expect him to do and hire with hiring Luke Fickle. And frankly, I think the message got through to Greg Gard, right? I mean, we talked about him maybe having some issues with recruiting, but none of us really, we all still believed in him. We all, we all wanted him to stay and he, he showed up. So I feel like it's, everyone's going to be held to that standard now at this point. Um, even though McIntosh is a football guy and football is going to always be number one for him, um, I think that the athletic department is all going to be held there. And I think the hockey program is going to feel be part of the same same culture. Yeah, I mean, I, I take a look at this, and I don't know if Fickle is being held to the same standard as him. I think what, what did kind of flip the switch in the guard situation was the fact that Paul Chris was let go. And – when you look at that, it was one of those kind of like a wake up call to him. Like I need to get this done because look what happened when, when we brought in the guy, like you, you could think that it's a step down or whatever was going to happen. But what in reality happened was Wisconsin felt like an upgrade handily in the football side with the coaching hire and for guard, it was, well, we know how desirable this program is. We can get somebody in here. So you need to step up or we'll find somebody who will step up the program to where we feel it should be. And we've, we've seen what that ceiling was before with Bo Ryan, which is national championship game. Well, you got to prove that you're capable of building a team to that level. So I think that that's kind of what the, the circumstances are different. And I think they're viewed differently probably, but I think the expectations are similar. Yeah, I think so too. And, and yeah. One of the, my least favorite things was was seeing people automatically equate 
guard with Crist. It was an easy thing to do. And yes, you can. There's some surface level parallels. I understood that, but that that was that really gr that ground my gears. Um, the same way, I'm not equating. Uh, I'm not equating guard with fickle. It's a they're just two different situations. I understand the expectations are high, and they should be high. And I know last year was I guess you want to say a mulligan, whatever you want to call it, for guards team. Uh, we know it has to be better this year. And by all accounts, it is going to be. I would not be a bit surprised if Wisconsin challenged for a Big Ten title this season. That's that's big talk, but I, I wouldn't be surprised a bit. And I would be shocked if they weren't a top five team in the conference. This is, this team's going back to the tournament. They stay healthy. They're going to be just fine. And it's not because I think A.J. Storr is going to come in and average 20 points a game. I don't think he's, I don't think that's going to happen. It's not. It's not. But that was a symptom of the fact that Things are looking better this year is that guard was able to land someone who's going to be a piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. These kids are maturing. You got Gus Bus. Is Gus Bus giving us a comment yet? Um, I'm going to get him on the video. podcast. Going to get Gus on the podcast. That's <laughs> that's that one's going to happen. But I, I'm I'm very confident uh, of of this. Uh, and, and yeah, maybe guard didn't need a little bit of a fire lit under him, but I do think he gets it. So I'm I'm confident that Wisconsin's basketball season and Wisconsin's football season will be similarly successful this upcoming year. Yeah, if I give you guys – Rajiv, I don't hear you, bud. Here. Sorry, what I was going to say is that they're both going to be really fun to watch too. Like everything with the football program, changing offense completely, and then on the, the basketball side, bringing in guys like us and A.J. Store, the athleticism has, has gone up. I'm excited to just watch these teams too because the games are frankly going to be – a hell of a lot less boring, which I'm good with. And although Badger games really aren't boring for us because they're stressful, the, the, sometimes the what we're watching can be a little slow. And I think that's going to change in both sports, which I'm really excited about. That's a great point because there is a marketing aspect yes. to, to your sports, your sports um, department, your athletic department, right? And as much as I enjoy, I, I I enjoy watching every Badger game. Really, I mean, I always get excited for it. I always enjoy the process. It's tough watching long scoring droughts, both, on, both football and basketball, right? The two had paralleled themselves a little bit, and there is going to be a new energy, I think, on both sides of the programs here. Um, I want to throw this question out here because, again, I, I definitely want to get, while we got this this awesome panel together, I want to get these these user questions. What is your most controversial opinion? Uh, where is this questionnaire? Hold on, let me put it up, but we can start. One of these guys had a, a question. What is all of our most controversial opinions? And uh, Justin, we'll start with you. Badger related. Oh. Badger related. Oh, come on. <laughs> um, if we're gonna, if, yeah, if we're going to talk about this year, I I think we'd have to go to the wide receiver room. And my controversial opinion is probably that I think I think CJ Williams falls in as our number two receiver this year. And I think that's going to be behind behind Green in this season. I think there's a lot of people that, that think that I might be a little bit higher on him than than some of the other people are in terms of what we have in that room right now. My controversial opinion is from a couple of years ago. I have said on the show a couple of times, I was never, I was not a really big um, Johnny Davis fan just in general. I think that I, I thought that the inconsistency that he played with um, was really, was just rough. And, and I thought I found it difficult to watch at times. He was great. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he was on our team because he, we, we took his places and we, we, he did great stuff, but I really just, I was I, I got so nervous going into games because I'm like, he could have a game where he just is, is turning the ball over all the time. I really am, was just not a fan of Johnny Davis. Wow. Hey, by the way, just, just asking, have you seen, did you watch him play in uh, summer league at all this year? I did not I watch did, any I summer did league. See some of it. He, he, the light has gone on, and that doesn't mean he's going to be a starter. But he is. I, I have no, no, and this doesn't impact how he was at Wisconsin. But he is going to be a a really solid rotational player. He just he showed three level, three level scoring, which was what well, you, you know the, the three point shot. It, it can always get better. It's going to continue to be a work in progress. But he he showed me something, and he's going to for for a young bullets uh, wizard bullets showing my age, uh, a young wizards team. He's gonna he's gonna get some some major run this year. So I'm I, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, I wish I really, him well. I really do. But I will say I will say my, my only counter argument is look at Wisconsin with Davis two years ago and Wisconsin without Davis. That's a pretty good sign that the, that, the, that the kid was bringing it. So yeah. controversial opinions. I, I'm gonna step outside the Badgers for this one, although it's tangentially related. 
Uh, Jake Ferguson is going to push for double digit touchdowns for the Dallas Cowboys and is going to have the second most receiving yards on the team. Uh, so I, I just want, I, you know, I don't think it's that controversial. None of my opinions are controversial because they are ordained. But for those who have not been following Jake, uh, a starter who was for some reason getting more playing time over over Jake last year at tight end has now moved on to other pastures, clearing the way for Madison Memorial's own Jake Ferguson to become a, a budding superstar in the National Football League. I'm not saying this because of my blood relation. I'm saying it because I can appreciate a possible generational talent when I see one. Facts. Joe knows. Joe knows. I don't even. I don't even know that that's controversial, Scary. I think he. I think he's going to be a fantastic pro. I really do. I, I don't think it's controversial. I'm just talking about those those doubters and haters out there, and there's so many of them. Uh, but the real ones know. Uh, you know, it was mom, Dawn, and I. We we we, we talk. My my daughter. Uh, and, and we are very excited about uh, now the fact that it's on the Cowboys. This is trick. This this is, this is trickier because I'm a, I'm a Packer fan, as everyone knows. But in games where they're not playing Green Bay, Jake can can drop a, a 150 burger with three touchdowns. That's that's great. I love it. Um, here, here's my two quick. This, one's not controversial. Melvin Gordon was absolutely robbed of the Heisman. Mm -hmm. um, that's not controversial, but I, I need to always throw that one out there. The yep. controversial one that I, I will still die on this hill is Badger fans should be much more grateful of Gary Anderson coming here, bringing Dave Randa, the, the three four defense, and re honestly recruiting a lot of talent. He yeah. people sleep on it. Like he brought a lot of talent in, and his win loss record was very good during that time frame. And people point to losing to Ohio State in the Big Ten title game. That's what we, we've done under other coaches too. I don't know. I will die on that hill. Badger fans don't give that man enough respect for what he it's did. It's tough to be grateful, though, the way he left. It's tough. He brought he, he, he brought did, and left Dave Aranda. He did burn down the city he when, when he left. He, he didn't. He, he like brought a gift to a party, and then he yeah. left it, and that gift yeah. was Dave Aranda. It's he, perfect. He Irish goodbye us. <laughs> he sent me a D, he sent me a DM when he was already in the air. That's how I found out about it. But. To go to Oregon State, which is amazing. I mean, Beaver was a very, very interesting mascot and all. I, we can have some fun with that. But that, that was a huge drop-off. But I will say he had some skill players that uh, were very, very good, and some of his offensive schemes were fantastic. But I, I just wasn't comfortable with 230-pound offensive linemen. I just feel like that was the way <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was recruiting, like, oh man, kickers and stuff to play offensive line. And I just – you can't – you need the be big, beefy kids. And so I, I just feel like that rubber was going to meet road eventually with, with, uh, I called him Jerry actually for the first two years I knew him, but I guess it's Gary. Maybe that's why he left. What's he doing now? I, I think I saw him over at a, at a car dealership. He's doing nothing, right? He's out of coaching. Uh, Bruce Leroy says, Fickle hasn't coached the game yet, but you're better than Penn State. What are you all smoking? Another Penn State fan has found his way into the chat. That's yeah. always fun. Uh, hey, what, this, hey, this hey, year, Leroy, Bruce, yeah. Yeah, Bruce. Hey, Bruce. If that's your real name, that I bet that isn't you and your avatar there. Um, I, I beat you arm wrestling with my pinky buddy. But one He's thing I do know dragon. is I, Luke Fickle was in the college football playoff in 2021. Penn State hasn't even sniffed it, so I'm not exactly sure what you're you know talk about smoking. Maybe you need to smoke something different, my friend. Come down to Mifflin Street someday, and we'll get you we'll get you hooked up. But yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's it's that it's that. Almost a blue blood thing Penn State has going that gets you guys warped, but uh, good luck anyway. Hey Jake, I could I completely agree. Hey Jake, who's your favorite? Uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> hey Dan Naro, by the way, for those on the podcast chiming in, saying great panel. Uh, he was on the show the other day, did a great job. We talked about my jihad when we diddle and my carjacking story. Um, we'll get Jake back on as well. The biggest Luke Fickle fan there is is Jake Ananaro, so definitely grateful for him coming in. Guys, buy or sell this one, Alien Space. Uh, Badgers this year, Sweet 16, Elite 8. Realistic? You buying or selling? I'm buying Sweet 16. I think, I think I'd buy that as realistic. I'm not buying Elite 8, but I'm buying Sweet 16. I think this team is far more capable of being able to separate <clears throat> from teams than they were last year, which is the difference. And uh, no nine-minute scoring droughts, so that'll be a difference. That's, that's part of that equation. <laughs> <laughs> too soon. Too soon. Um, yeah. Every game last season was 61 to 58. I looked back and it was, it was like 19 games had that score and every single game was a one possession game inside of a minute. I think we're going to be winning games like 74 or 75 to 68 this year. I think it's going to be, there's a little more spread there. A couple more threes going to go down and, and, uh, 
Gus Boss is I my prediction is Gus Boss is gonna is going to get a lot of run and he's gonna play beyond his years as a as a real solid front court backup. Scary, can I ask you, is he your favorite? He is he the favorite person in this class? Is he is Gus your is he the, the star of this class in your opinion? <laughs> I, you know, spring, summer, fall, and winter, as they say. Uh, Noel Winter, this is a really, really talented class, a very under-the-radar class. This isn't a class full of four stars, like like 24 could potentially be, McAndrew. But uh, I do think that that uh, there are going to be – I don't think there's going to be a lot of red shirts this year with this, with this freshman class. I could be wrong. But if you, you guys are probably getting the same reports that I am getting about – who is showing out in in practices, and it's not necessarily who who you're thinking. Every every one of those freshmen can play, mm-hmm. and so I, I expect them all to get playing time. I don't know if that's going to work with the rotation. Not not my you know guard can can go and do that. By the way, while we're on, I'm going to get Macintosh on my podcast one of these days. I'm not sure how it's going to happen. We have to get. Yeah, you know, that would be that would be amazing. That would be no, amazing. it's coming. We're 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 working it. We'll get we'll get we'll make it work. But anyway, I'll get some of my crew to do it. But we need those kids on the sidelines. I mean the 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 court side seats. I don't know how that's going to work, but I I I love my olds. Don't get me wrong. I love nice Sherry and to sit sit on my, sit back and watch. But we need more life not just in the Purdue game. We need it every game. And I think we can do that. I totally agree with you. I, when, when Michigan state switched to their, you know, like their sideline fans on like just flat surfaces, I would love that. And when I was a badger, obviously I, I sat on the, in the first row, I camped out for those seats right behind the basket. And I always wanted it to be the sideline because the energy is so different. If we can improve the Cole center, because it's, it's not easy. I mean, it's not, it's a big, it's a hockey arena. It's tough to have that energy. We had it for many years in the Bo Ryan era, and yeah. I felt I was a part of that, and it was great. But I do feel like things have changed, and we do need to make changes to that arena. I will do a shirtless dance at midcourt. A shirtless dance at midcourt with my pecs glistening. You may, you when that change is made by Mac, by my MC Mac. Uh, Joe Frickleton says, Scary's always been facts. I want to throw this up here while we got you, Scary, too. Uncultured Barbarian said when he was on Twitter, uh, loved reading Scary Alvarez's tweets. So definitely a lot of people out there enjoy what you put out there. Um, I, Uncultured I want- Barbarian, get you, let's get you back on Twitter. Hey, it's nothing's fine. changed on Twitter. Twitter's Twitter, nothing's changed. It's totally calm and everything's going great there. So just, just hop right on and you won't be any – no issues at all. I mean, this is fine. Everything is fine. Uh, guys, I want to wrap up on this because we, we do have to kind of wrap this show up. And, again, I apologize that we didn't get to all the comments. What's one underrated um, storyline this year, football or basketball, that you're looking forward to seeing? I know I can fall on the spot on this one. Uh, yeah. but I, I can go. I can, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go oh, ahead sir. Okay. I was going to say, for football, I, I want to see how many games we rack up 300 yards passing. Like, that to me is the big thing. I want to watch the the passing game go and show out multiple games this year and be like, wow, this is what it's like to be a team that can go out and light a team up through the air and do it consistently. Yeah, it, that's that's good. This is a, a, a smaller issue, but the Minnesota Golden Gophers and, and, and P.J. Fleck, their Russian mobster coach, they beat us two consecutive seasons. This is a smaller story that we're looking at the high level stuff. We're going to compete for the see you know, playoff and all this stuff. We need to take care of business in our rivalry games next year, whether it's Iowa or whether it's the the Axe. And I that that is a. I'm not saying other games aren't important. Beating Ohio State at home would be a gigantic program building kind of win. We got to get back to the basics and start Minnesota at, on another long uh, losing streak and decades of misery that we used to be able to do because they really I, I don't understand where they're getting the cockiness i mean fleck is as i as i've been known to say on twitter he's a he's a 500 coach in the big 10 after seven seasons after taking over a nine and four team with zero bowl games and zero uh, uh division championships that is where their level is so beating us is there is everything to them so we need to go up there in minneapolis smack them down shut them up and and just you know, get them back to worrying about their their horrible basketball program. 
And I will say that I, what I think is a bit underrated is Braylon Allen's chances to really have a potential Heisman season. I'm not saying he's going to win the Heisman. Don't, I'm not saying that, but we've never seen a running back run into six man boxes in this program or not for a long time. I think that we're going to run the ball more than people think we are. And I think Braylon Allen is going to have an absolute amazing season. And I think his ability to potentially get in that discussion beyond the watch list for the Heisman, that's an underrated point. My, my quick one here, and um, again, there's so many more comments we get into, which I apologize for. Joe Frickleton says his underrated thing. Uh, mo- our storyline is batch receivers. Kyle Kramer says Mordecai and crunch time. Um, mine really is, I, I'm ex- so excited to see Chucky Hepburn with weapons around him. I'm so tired of him having to shoulder such a burden that, quite frankly, I don't think he wanted to. I don't think he's best suited for it. And then catching a ton of flack for not yeah, excelling in a role I don't think he was meant to excel in. Now, with Store around him, Connor Seijin uh, coming into sophomore year, I can't wait to see Hepburn playing more of a, a point guard role, which I think suits his game a lot better. And I can't wait for Badger basketball to start, quite frankly. Um, people, take, he, people forget how good Chucky Hepburn is because uh, some of the things he had to do last year to try and carry that team, Yeah, I totally agree. I think Hepburn is going to be a, a uh, all-conference type performer this season in that offense with that cast around him. Agreed. All right, gentlemen, I unfortunately have to wrap this this one up. I have to have a bit of a hard stop, but this is great. Appreciate it. This is great. This is awesome. We're going to do this again as long as Scary can continue to slum it with us. Um, <laughs> I love this. This is this is great. I got I got to do uh, dinner in, in New York later, so I'm going to head out of my jet. But biggest margin of victory this year, uh, 69 points. I love it. Nice. Against Minnesota, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, before we end here, I do appreciate every single person tuning in. All Everyone watching this later, you guys are incredible. Please go subscribe to Scary Alvarez's podcast. Um, let's get his numbers up there. He does tremendous work. He's been doing it for a long time. Insightful, articulate, funny. Uh, quite frankly, I give him three months before he has more subscribers than me and us. So, and I'm oh, a- that is that is crazy and ridiculous. It's gonna it's gonna be one. But uh, <laughs> you, you, it's a video thing, so YouTube is where most of this happens. But I'm also eventually when when Cindy helps me out here and has me figure this out. It's going to be on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, if you want to hear the you know, the, the audio-only version. But uh, like I said, we've got Matt LaPay coming up on the next one, and we've got a whole series of Badgers coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun, and thanks a lot for the, the promo, Brian. Yeah, of course, man, absolutely. Um, but that guy's on Wisconsin, and uh, we'll talk to everybody later. A lot of stuff coming up later this week, next week, as always. So uh, on Wisconsin, and let's go.